I hear the groans of Nigerians who work hard every day to provide for themselves and their families. I'm not oblivious of the expressed and sometimes unexpressed frustrations of my fellow citizens. I know for a fact that some of our compatriots are even asking if this is how our administration want to renew their hope, their compatriots. Take this from me. The time may be rough and tough. However, our spirit must remain unbound because tough times never last. We are made for this period, never to flinch, never to falter. The social economic challenges of today should energize and rekindle our love and faith in the promise of Nigeria. Our current circumstances should make us resolve to work better for the good of our beloved nation. Our situation should make us resolve that this new year 2024, each and every one of us will commit to be better citizens. Silently, we have worked to free captives from abductors. While we can't beat our chest yet, that we had solved all the security problems. We are working hard to ensure that we all have peace of mind in our homes, places of work, and on the roads. Having laid the groundwork of our economic recovery plans within the last seven months of year 2023, we are now poised to accelerate the pace of our service delivery across the sectors. Just this past December, during COP28 in Dubai, the German Chancellor, Olaf Scholz, and I agreed and committed to a new deal to speed up the delivery of Siemens energy power projects that will ultimately deliver reliable supply of electricity to our homes and businesses. Under the Presidential Power Initiative, which began in 2018. Other power installation projects to strengthen the reliability of our transmission lines and optimize the integrity of our national grid are ongoing across the country. My administration recognizes that no meaningful economic transformation can happen without steady electricity supply. In year 2024, we are moving a step further in our quest to restart local refinery of petroleum products with Porter Court refinery and the Dangote refinery, which shall fully come on stream. To ensure constant food supply, security, and affordability, we will step up our plan to cultivate 500,000 hectares of farmland across the country to grow maize, rice, wheat, millet, and other staple crops. We launch the dry season farming with 120,000 of land in Jigawa State last November under our National Wheat Development Program. And this environment does not destroy value. On every foreign trip I have embarked on, my message to investors and other business people has been the same. Nigeria is ready and open for business. I will fight every obstacle that impedes business competitiveness in Nigeria, and I will not hesitate to remove any clog hindering our path to making Nigeria a destination of choice for local and foreign investments. In my 2024 budget presentation to the National Assembly, I listed my administration's eight priority, priority areas to include national defense and internal security, job creation, 
macroeconomic stability, investment environment, optimization, human capital development, poverty reduction, and social security. And a four. We'll talk about that uh, um, later. However, uh, we're now being joined by Peter Okolo, a security expert right here in Lagos. He joins us uh, virtually uh, live. Uh, Peter Okolo, good morning. Happy New Year. I, I, feel, I feel so good that you can hear me well now. Sorry about the uh, network. Okay, uh, Peter, um, so much has been said about President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on his plan and on his administration's plan uh, for a better Nigeria. Of course, part of what he has said is that um, Nigeria will begin local refining of petrol in the year 2024. He has also said his administration is taking uh, steps uh, to achieve steady electricity. And I think the business community uh, should be happy about this talked about constant food supply and he has also said that he is going to uh, wage war or fight every obstacle uh, that impedes uh, on business growth and he said his focus will also be on national defense and uh, internal security and this is what is uh, of utmost concern to me uh, looking at the topic of discussion uh, Nigeria security uh, what do you consider as the right strategy for this administration to embrace right now in kneeling insecurity to the board all right I I think the president has um, I mean that was a very beautiful speech um, he has the right things all in the right places uh, addressing major the drivers of violence, uh, which is to fight poverty, um, lack of unemployment and underemployment in, in Nigeria, and then of course improving business environment uh, and all of that, which I think uh, are major drivers of, of crime, uh, major drivers of violence within our space as a nation. And so uh, the president has spoken to us yesterday to say, you know what, I want to fight this. Yes, he has told us also that, yes, they cannot beat their chest now to say they have been able to handle it effectively at the age or two. Um, but of course, his focus is to ensure that um, uh, more focus is put on defense and in putting that you have to then strengthen the police community of policing and intelligence gathering uh work closely i think we should work closely with ladies to be able to build trust i know in gathering for me prepared attacks uh, for the encore uh, uh since attacks and on the christmas and new year period in plateau is still very fresh in our minds um those attacks are are quite major uh it just it just goes to tell you uh the level of vulnerability that in some of those areas and so for our pe people uh we're looking up to the president to put more bites in that fight of insecurity as they begin to strengthen and put more 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 resources in strengthening the defense of this nation and also in ensuring that we can improve the interagency coordination of security agencies uh, uh, critical for us, you know, as a nation, as we prepare, you know, and this new, uh, he needs to ensure that he promotes a federation. We cannot say more than this. Effective collaboration and information sharing between the police, the military intelligence, and other security agencies, you know, so that they are able to be available resources to answer our security. Um, he needs to ensure that the all the joint for the joint targets, you know, that they are currently in place are strengthening them all. Uh, and that with that, uh, that, that speech addresses all of and I believe that the president um, effectively to see what we can do in that direction. Um, um, 
going through the papers this morning, uh, Pope Francis, um, you know, um, said, uh, had a message for uh, Nigeria. And the message is that um, he prays that, um, you know, God delivers Nigeria from uh, the, uh, horror. I think that's the way he puts it. Uh, what do you make out of this? And do you really think um, investors, like the president has promised investors uh, that he will work towards ensuring that, of course, the environment is strengthened? For, for businesses to thrive. Do you really think that um, this can be achieved when we continue to have an unsecured nation, an insecure nation, Rod? Well, uh, of course, you, you know that we have had two major exits uh, of multinationals in the manufacturing sectors who have left Nigeria. Yeah, the president has been going around all, of, all over the world. Um, in the past seven months that he has been in office, um, you know, trying to bring in investors into Nigeria. But in doing that, uh, uh, we need to ensure how have stabilized that have been here for years, that have provided employment for years, uh, also not exiting. Uh, I, so I think that majorly one of the things that he needs to do is to ensure that he can strengthen our security, keep people comfort that if they are coming in, that they, they would not be able to use all of the things that that is very critical. I mean, even as a business, that there's an a business, there's an environment where you, you can't if you generate money, you don't lose it. Uh, uh, the, the, in, if you make your profit, how do they get back those profits back into their con back into their you know you know their their country back, back, back you know into the host uh, into the, their own country if they are coming in? Those are some things. Those are some of the environment, some of the conditions that he needs to ensure that are conducive for the people that he's he's, he's been he's been inviting to come in. So he needs to work actively. To push our security uh, is is in right in right hands. Uh, uh, needs to be changed, you know. Um, he needs to quickly do that. Uh, uh, I I'm, I'm sure it'll be too early for us to be asked for people's help, but it's important. All the people in government now who are handling our security agencies should have their KPIs completely spelled out for them. And there is a monthly appraisals to ensure that they are meeting them. I mean, all right, I'll quickly, I'll quickly, okay. Let me quickly ask you because um, um, time um, is uh, fast spent. Uh, the question is. Uh, uh, some people have come out to condemn uh, having to promote uh, generals uh, in the face of a uh, challenging insecurity in the country. What's your take? Plus, uh, Nigerians are now calling, different groups are calling for Nigerians to arm themselves. Uh, now taking a clue from what happened on Christmas Eve in Plateau State. What's your take? Well, in terms of promoting generals, I don't have an, a problem with that. I mean, if you retire, if you have people, um, you, you have to be able to also move some people up. Uh, so I th think you do, and that's not, that is not the wrong thing to promote people because some people have been retired. Um, so the right direction is the right thing to do. Uh, but of course, like I said, people need to know that they have a responsibility and take it seriously. And they are level of accountability. Um, luckily enough, he had set up a committee that, that sits with the presidency, the monitoring committee, a performance monitoring committee that sits with the president, that sits in the presidency, that should be able to present an account of every appointed uh, military heads or security heads to give us account of what they are doing on a monthly basis so that those things, you can see those online. Numbers don't lie. So if the people are, are, are ensuring that they give an account on the monthly things, a lot of things will change. Um, for us, uh, I I don't. I would it would say 
take laws into your hands. If your hands then were in a banana republic. Um, yes, so, uh, people are moving and uh, people are preparing uh, security for jobs, ensuring that they can get security for themselves, provide security for themselves. You have people who have to travel uh, to different vulnerable locations, having to get security, having to get police escorts to go with them and all of that. Those are challenges of not having to have, not having a, a good security on ground. Yes, it's a cost on business. Those are major cost on business. Okay, so business. Do, do you support the call for Nigerians to carry arms or to be armed? Armed. I I, I do not support Nigerians. The call for Nigerians to carry arms for now, um, because we have we do not have the 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 right framework you know to be able to control uh is, that is needed i mean if you look at america uh where arms is allowed you could see the level of, of shootings uh, that is happening all over in america i mean i mean this is where uh, data that you can actually you know push and get and get to do this but in nigeria we don't have the kind of data so for, for me the right framework um, to be able to encourage uh, individuals to carry arms now. Um, we have asked even for private security industry to carry arms. That hasn't been true. How much more uh, uh, private individuals to bring to carry arms? So I think that is the right framework right now in place uh, to be able to push for individuals to carry arms individually. All right, uh, Peter Okolo, uh, this is much that time can permit me to take from you. If not, I would have loved to take you on on more issues uh, because we don't have the right framework right now. But what then happens about the insurgents? The government has been unable to bring to book and they continue uh, to kill people, maim Nigerians, and nothing is being done. Well, let me thank you for sharing your thoughts with us this morning and um, i pray that you also enjoy thank your 2024 you and thanks for being there always thank you very much, yeah. all right have a beautiful day well viewers i've been speaking with peter okolo peter okolo is a security expert and of course uh, the issue we looked at today is the national uh security talking about nigeria's state of insecurity 